I want to talk today about temptations and trials. Um, I've, I've seen a lot of people post on Facebook different images or slogans or things where it says things like, well, God's not giving you too much. So, you know, he won't give you more than you can handle. And God is working good things through these, these uh, terrible trials you're going through. Okay, that all sounds really nice, but the problem with that is God is not the one who's causing the trials, according to the Bible. If we're going to believe the Bible, then we're going to have to believe that God does not cause trials. God himself says, tells us that he doesn't. I mean, in, in the Word, um, James tells us that when tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. Okay, so here we have God saying, um, he, you know, the Bible tells us God does not tempt anyone. And we know that God is love. And love, of course, wouldn't tempt anyone. Love always protects. Protecting isn't tempting. You don't tempt someone if you're protecting them. Love, God is love, and love always protects, according to 1 Corinthians 10, right? So, uh, 1 Corinthians 13, rather. Um, so, why do people believe that God causes temptation? The main reason is they read things like 1 Corinthians 10, 13, where it says, No temptation has seized you except what is common to man. But God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. Um, so, But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. Okay, now that sounds a lot like... God is causing the temptation, doesn't it? It sounds like he's causing the temptation to happen. But we know from James that it, God does not tempt anyone. You know, God is, cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. So let's look back at 1 Corinthians 10, 13 and just take it apart for a minute. <clears throat> it says, no temptation has seized you except what is common to man. So every temptation that comes on you is common to everyone. You know, a lot of people have that same temptation. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. Okay, so here he's saying, he's not saying God is tempting you. He's saying he will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. Now, it doesn't say God is doing the tempting. He says, when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. So here we're seeing how God would not let you be tempted beyond what you could bear. He would provide a way out so you could stand up under it. That's love, is providing a way out of temptation, not causing the temptation. So, you know, if we look at 1 Corinthians 10, 13 in a more realistic manner, we see where, um, you know, you could word it to say that no temptation has seized you except what is common to man. God is faithful and he will provide a way out so that you can bear, stand up under um, whatever the temptation is. He'll provide a way out. That's what God is. That's that's God's, um, that's his nature is love. And love, um, love is patient and kind. Love keeps no record of wrongs. Love always protects. So um, God it would not cause a temptation. James 1 tells us that. James James uh, 1 13 tells us that, you know, when when uh, no one should say, God is tempting me. God does not tempt people. God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. That's James 1 13 and 14. So um, another one that, another verse that people think uh, says that God is causing temptations is James 1, right there in the same chapter, James chapter 1, where it says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. So that sounds like, oh, well, um, the, these temptations are a good thing, and they're developing perseverance, therefore they must be from God. And it doesn't say that. If you read it, it says, consider it pure joy whenever you face trials of many kinds. Whenever you face them, it doesn't say God is causing them. It says, consider it joy when they happen. Consider it joy whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know the testing of your faith develops perseverance. In other words, when trials come against you, you get to exercise your faith. And, and God is the one who causes the way out, causes the deliverance from the, whatever the test or trial is. So God's not causing the trial. God's not behind the trial. Um, in fact, we know from Revelations 2.10, it says that 
Do not be afraid of what you're about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you, and you will suffer persecution for 10 days. Be faithful. So here we see, um, you know, in Revelation 2.10, it tells us plainly that the devil is the one who puts the people in prison. He's talking to believers, talking to the churches. It's to the letters to the churches in Revelation 2. And um, he's, Jesus says, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you. Who's doing it? The devil. Who puts people in prison? Not God. The devil does. That's, that's not God's work. What happened when in the book of Acts when Peter was in prison or when Paul was in prison? Um, they, were, they were delivered out of prison. The angel got them out. God didn't want them to be in prison. That wasn't God's idea. God didn't want people to be uh, under that, that trial and test. That's not, I mean, God created the Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden, there were no tests or trials. There was no evil in the Garden of Eden. That's what God wants for people is, is um, you know, good. God wants good. God is good. So, um, and we know that, uh, like some people will say when someone dies, you know, that, oh, oh, uh, God took that person. Or, you know, it was their person, it was their time to go. You know, God took them. It was their time to go. Well, that's that's crazy too because the Bible says in Hebrews two fourteen it says since the children have flesh and blood he too that's Jesus shared in their humanity so that by his death he might destroy him who holds the power of death that is the devil so who holds the power of death the devil as the Bible plainly tells us who holds the power of death some people will say oh in Revelations in, in Revelation chapter one it says that Jesus holds the keys of hell and death. No, it's spiritual death it's talking about. Because look at what else, the keys of hell and death. Is hell a physical thing? No, hell is a spiritual place. Hell and death, are, he's talking about hell being the result of spiritual death. Jesus holds the keys to that because he provides the salvation that delivers people out of hell and death. Um, God, Jesus doesn't hold the keys to physical death. Physical death, the Bible calls it our last enemy. <clears throat> It says the last enemy to be destroyed is death. You can read it for yourself in 1 Corinthians. They, um, the Bible tells us plainly the, the last enemy to be destroyed is death. So, um, so we know that God is not behind temptation. God is not behind um, sickness and disease. God is not behind death. Um, you know, I, I, if you're going to talk about sickness and disease, there's Acts 10, 38, how Jesus went about doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. In other words, God was with Jesus. So Jesus was healing those who were under the power of the devil. Was, the sickness was caused by Satan and the healing was caused by Jesus. And, of course, the Bible tells us that no kingdom divided against itself can stand. Uh, Matthew 12, uh, uh, 25 and 26 says, Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined. And every city or household divided against itself will not stand. If Satan drives out Satan, he's divided against himself. How then can his kingdom stand? So that tells us that, um, you know, God is not behind sickness and disease. Because if so, you know, when, he, when uh, he was healing the sick, he'd be working against himself. If he caused the sickness to begin with, then his kingdom would be divided against itself. Um, a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. And Jesus himself told us that. So, and it says that Satan can't, is not going to drive out Satan either. So in other words, um, Satan, is, he's causing sickness. He's never healing. That's not something Satan does. Otherwise, his kingdom would be divided against itself. Satan does not heal. God heals. God is the healer. Satan is the one who causes sickness and disease. There was no sickness or disease until, um, until the fall of man. After, uh, you know, in the Garden of Eden, there was no sickness. And sickness came about as a result of man falling. So, um, so we, we see that that God is not the cause of trials or temptations, whether that be sickness, whether that be a death of a loved one, or no matter what the trial or temptation is, God's not the cause of it. The cause of it is Satan. It, Jesus came to give life in that more abundantly. Satan came to steal, kill, and destroy. Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. It says the thief, when Jesus talks about him. Who's the thief? Satan. Satan stole everything that's ever been stolen. There was no stealing until Satan came. When Satan came, he stole man's um, authority over the earth. 
the first thing he did, you know, man committed high treason and handed over to Satan, so Satan stole that. And Satan has done nothing but steal, kill, and destroy since then. He steals people's health, he kills people, he destroys everything they have. That's what Satan's about. Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And Jesus came to give life, and that more abundantly. God does not cause temptation. God, um, when you're tempted, do not say, God is tempting me. Because God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. Um, when a loved one dies, God didn't take them. Yes, they'll go to heaven if they knew Jesus, if they were saved, they're going to heaven. Yes, absolutely. But the, their physical death was not God's will. It was not caused by God. God did not do that. The power of physical death is in Satan's hands. Hebrews 2.14 tells us plainly that is the devil who has the power of death. And that's physical death. So, um... So with all that in mind, let's just not blame God. Um, let's not say, oh, these trials, God has a reason for these trials. No, he doesn't. God doesn't have a reason for those trials. God wants you delivered out of those trials. That's what God does. He delivers people out of trials. He doesn't put people in trials. He does not tempt people. God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. And that's my message for today. Thanks.